He stood with his feet in the ice-cold snow, puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes or bags. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then he thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more? Welcome to our Christmas liturgy. Let us begin with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed, to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit, and her husband Joseph, being just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means the God with us. When Joseph woke, woke up from his sleep, he did it as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to her son, and he called his name Jesus. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way.
Yesterday I received a Christmas card. The picture shows a silhouette of the Magi on camels in a desert landscape, following a star. A pretty standard Christmas card. But the caption caught my attention. It reads, wise men still seek him. My first reaction was to be flattered that the person who sent me the card thought I was a wise man. But once my vanity subsided a bit, it struck me how powerful those words actually are. It got me thinking, do wise men still seek him? And what makes a man wise? The Greek word Matthew uses for the wise men is magoi, from where we get the English words magician and magic. The Magi, however, weren't into card tricks and pulling rabbits out of hats. They were astronomers, mathematicians, astrologers, alchemists, physicians. They'd be learned in pretty much everything that humans knew in the ancient world. And these were clever people. But as we know, just because you're clever or just because you know lots of stuff, that doesn't make you wise. Wisdom is something else altogether. Wisdom, I think, at its heart, is a search for the truth and not putting up with anything less than the truth, however difficult that may be. And it's in that sense the Magi were really wise men. Through their learning and studies, they knew the significance of this new star that was shining, probably the conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Saturn, the king of the planets and the planet of the Jews. That's knowledge, but in wisdom, they knew it wasn't enough to observe that from afar. They had to go and be involved themselves, which is why they set out on their journey. When they reached Jerusalem, they were wise enough to recognise that their knowledge alone wasn't enough for them to complete their quest. After all, Jesus wasn't born in Jerusalem. To reach Jesus, they had to consult the word of God, where the town of the Messiah's birth was prophesied by the prophet Micah. Wisdom is knowing that I don't know. And when they found Jesus, they knelt in worship and offered him the very best they had, gold, frankincense, myrrh. Wisdom is knowing when you've found what you've been searching for. Wisdom is humility. Wisdom is giving your very best. Finally, when they were warned in a dream not to go back via Jerusalem and tell Herod where the baby is, they obey and go back by a different route. Wisdom is knowing when you need to change, when circumstances are different from what you expected, and then being willing to adapt to a new reality. Like we saw a moment ago, wisdom is a search for the truth. For us Christians, truth isn't some abstract philosophical concept. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. The closer we are to Jesus, the closer we are to the truth. The closer, the more lively and the more life-giving our relationship with Jesus is, then the more wise we are. The Magi saw the star and were wise enough to know that they couldn't just be passive observers. They needed to get involved. This Christmas will present every one of us with opportunities to get involved, helping the poor and needy, reaching out to the lonely, standing up for justice, even keeping peace at home. In the face of these needs, are we going to be passive observers or are we going to be wise enough to get involved? When they didn't find Jesus at Jerusalem, the Magi were wise enough to know that their knowledge was incomplete. They needed help. They knew what they didn't know. None of us are clever enough to know everything, but all of us can be wise enough to know that we still have much to learn. The Magi knelt in adoration before Jesus and gave him their very best. Wisdom is recognising God when I meet him, even in the most unlikely of places. Every day we meet Jesus in the faces of the people around us. Are we wise enough to recognise him? We might not have much in the way of gold, frankincense and myrrh, but do we give the best of our time and our effort? Finally, the Magi were wise enough to change their plans and went home by a different route. Are we wise enough to recognise when we're facing a new reality and when we need to change our plans? Perhaps something didn't work out as you expected or life threw you a curveball. Wisdom isn't about ignoring reality. It's about fully engaging with it. So that Christmas card, 
wise men still seek him? Is it true for the young men of St. Aidan's? My prayer for you all is that you be wise, that you seek the truth, and that you find it in Jesus Christ, just like those Magi did all those centuries ago at the first Christmas. Happy Christmas. We pray for our families. We pray for the gift of vaccine as much as we can. We pray for the gift of comfort for the homeless. We pray for those who have died this year due to COVID and other diseases. We pray for those who are traveling. We pray for each other this Christmas. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Today we go our separate ways on our own journeys to Christmas. As you set off today, we hope that you have taken time to be wise. Make wise choices, choose wise paths, and remember to continue to seek God.